So hello, so today we're talking about language. Often patients who come in for cognitive rehabilitation will come in and say that they're having a hard time finding words to say. And so today we're going to talk about two techniques to help patients find words better. So typically when a patient comes in, I would do an evaluation and I would confirm that word finding is a challenge for them. And then I would write goals. So I'm just going to give you an example of two typical goals that I would write. So the goal is to increase word finding overall. That's the objective. Two goals uh, right here are number one, patient will identify features of nouns when looking at a picture with 80% accuracy in three consecutive sessions. And for that, I would use the technique of a semantic feature analysis. which is an evidence-based technique to help patients access their semantic neural pathway to help them improve their ability to recall words better. Uh, this is basically using a picture and describing six features about the picture. Next, I would use this goal. Patient will label verbs when given the agent and object slash patient with 80% accuracy in three consecutive sessions. And actually, uh, an object or a person is known as a patient, and I'll show you that in a few minutes and show you how I would incorporate that in my therapy. And so this would be known as, I would use something called VNEST, and that is uh, a way of a patient hearing a word and being able to uh, describe the person who's doing the verb as well as who the verb, who the action is being done to. So patients having problems with word finding, this is our semantic feature analysis. Well, actually, this is what it looks like just to display the way I would use it. And I will show you actually what the patient is doing. And Real, in a real therapy session. Uh, basically, the semantic feature analysis will have a photograph. It's driven by a photograph that will be in the middle. Uh, and then it's going to be a series of questions that the patient will answer about the photograph. It is a, which would correlate with the group. So it's, it is a, the patient would describe what it is, but then I would also ask them what category the item belonged to. So these are sunglasses, they would be, a group could be an accessory. That is one way of describing it, but there's not necessarily one way of saying any, one way of saying it. Uh, there is the second question you, you use it for. I just wrote in some examples that a typical patient might say. Uh, you use it for eye protection. That is correlated, that question is correlated to the use of that particular item. Next we have, what does it do? And that correlates with an action related to the item. And a patient might say, filters out UV rays. Next, we have properties of the question, or it's really not a question, it's a statement. A patient just has to say, they would have to describe the item. And they possibly would say they have darkened lens, or they might try to name something about like the arms here, or there's, I know, a technical term for that. Or they might name something about rims. They can name any particular feature about what they look like. Then they have to answer where they're found. You find it, that would be what I would say, and they fill that blank in. They might say the drugstore. They might say department store. It's wherever you would find them. They might even say on my in my uh, drawer at home, and that would be acceptable. Next and lastly, it reminds me of, this is an asso correlated with association. And by the way, you find it is, is correlated with location. Association is what it ever reminds them of. It could be going to the beach. It could be just wearing them. Some people just wear them all the time when they're driving, going somewhere. So it's whatever they associate the item with. So what the patient would have in front of them, if this was a typical therapy session, is they would have their own form. This would be their semantic feature analysis form, which has the same information going around it, the same questions and the categories that those questions were related to, correlated to, or related to, and and then I would just pop a picture right in the middle 
and they would just answer those questions and go right uh, go right in the format that I just showed you the sequence. While semantic feature analysis helps improve word finding with nouns, a VNS strategy will help a patient identify verbs. And the way that would happen is uh, they would be given a target verb, and then they'd have to identify who does the verb and to whom the verb happens to. And the question of who does the verb, that would be known as the category of the agent. And the person or the thing that the verb happens to will be known as the patient. So what the patient would do is have to identify three agents. I'd like you to tell me who teaches. Professor Steve? Okay, professors. What do professors teach? Lessons. Lessons. I like the way you answered that question very quickly. All right. Professors teach lessons. Who else teaches? Can you give me another example? Parents. Parents. And what do parents teach? Manners. Manners. They definitely teach manners. Thank you. All right, tell me one more. Who else teaches? Tutors. Tutors. Thank you. Well, thinking about thinking about my questions and answering them. And what do they teach? Students. Students. Good answer. So after they would identify all of those words, I would have them read the sentences back. So they would say, I would move the verb so that they, so it aligns with the agent and the patient, and they would say parents teach manners. Let's start at the top. Parents teach manners. Thank you. Professors teach lessons. And then? Tutors teach students. Okay, great. Then I would then ask them which sentence they would like to talk about, and then they would just choose one, and I just decided to select just one random sentence, and it is, parents teach manners. And then what I would do is I would ask three additional questions. And the way I would do that is I would use where, when, and why. Where do parents teach manners? Maybe the dinner table. Okay, thank you. And then when do parents teach manners? When they're eating at dinner. Yes, okay, thank you. And then why do parents teach manners? So they can teach life skills. Thank you. Life skills. So I would like you to read the entire sentence, starting with where we began, uh, with what parents teach manners, and then just go right down this column. Parents teach manners at the table. Parents teach manners at dinner time. Parents teach manners to teach life skills. Okay, thank you very much. After that, I would remove all of the cards and I would, I would ask questions to, and I would change the agent and the patient around. And I'm very good, you did an excellent job. And what I want to do is ask you some questions. I'm gonna take this away, and then I'm going to ask you if professors teach manners. No. Okay, and I'd like to know if tutors teach manners. No. Okay, I'd like to know if parents teach lessons. Not school lessons, no. Okay, thank you. Do parents teach manners? Yes. Thank you. Good job. So I'd like you to tell me what verb are we working on today? Teach. Teach, exactly. Excellent answer. So today we went over semantic feature analysis and VNS to help patients with word finding. Please subscribe to my channel if you would like more 
input on how to work with patients with mild cognitive impairment. However, I do want to note that these techniques can help patients also with major cognitive impairment. Thank you for watching today.